Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful God we serve. The Bible says heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Hallelujah. Friends, welcome once again to our online program. Ellie, will I seek you live devotionals of the Bible Academy. We thank the almighty God for who he is in our lives and what he continues to do in our midst. The Bible says in Psalm 92, verse 1, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto your name, O Most High. He said to show forth your loving kindness every morning and your faithfulness every night. That's why we lay to heart to give glory to his name and to sing praises unto him. Indeed, Jehovah is God and it continues to reign in our lives. Oh, how beautiful. Wow, Jesus, we worship you today. Lord, we praise you. God, we worship you. God, we magnify your holy name. You are the Lord of hosts. You are the God of the heavens. The Bible says you are the one who was and who is and who is to come. Jehovah, you are doing what only you can do in the name of Jesus. Lord, I made you up of our life. Make a difference. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we glorify your name. Indeed, you are God. Breaking traditions, breaking bondages, breaking religion, breaking bad habits, setting your people free. God, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. What an awesome God you are. Lega yada bagasata. 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 Ramos kotege belegebe. Rega belebe gezeke. Mendo soko solo boko shakata. Rika yada belebo go soko. Resto seto solo popo shata. Mende seto solo popo shata. Esto seto soso fako liga daya. Rabos mo soto bobo zeke. Lege yede bege zeke. Resto soto popo shika. Esto soto soso bako shaka. Membro seto seto soso bako shaka ta. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. God, we magnify your name. 
Indeed, you have said it and you have done it. The Bible says you are not a man that you should lie. You are not a son of man that you should repent. Have you said, <clears throat> shall you not do? Have you spoken? Shall you not make it good? This day, Lord, think through my mind. Speak, Lord, through my lips of clay. Grant unto me as well as your people today the spirit of wisdom. Grant us revelation in your knowledge. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Help us to know the hope of your calling, the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> in Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Friends, once again, welcome to our online program, Ellie Will I Seek You, Live Devotionals of the Bible Academy. We have been talking about cultivating the mindset of God's kingdom. Now, the Bible explains to us that the matters of God's kingdom is a priority to God, to Christ, and it should be to us. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus said specifically, Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. Now, in the Bible, when you see the word the kingdom of God, it's often used in other ways as the kingdom of heaven. What that means is that the heavens rules on earth. And when you talk about the heavens, heavens is not just, or the heaven is not just a location or a place. It is an atmosphere ruled by the almighty God. It is an atmosphere governed by the almighty God. It is an event, a place, a situation where Jehovah reigns. The Bible said the kingdom of this earth has become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. And there's an attitude that God wants us to have as believers in Christ. It is attitude begins with our thinking. Hence, we're going to be talking about in cultivating the mindset of the kingdom, you have to learn to mind your thoughts. In the book of Proverbs chapter 23, in verse number seven, the Bible said, for as he, that is a man, thinks in his heart, so he is, or so is he. The truth is that your thought influences your life. What you think affects how you live. Jesus says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 23, the Bible tells us to guard your heart with all diligence. He said, for out of it comes the issues or the matters of life. If you don't guard your heart, you become a prey to strange thoughts, to the influence of demonic spirits, to satanic manipulation. Hence, you have to put a wall around your thoughts. And basically, it's not just your thoughts that you address. You address the state of of your heart. David said also in the book of Psalms chapter 19 verse 14, he said, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God. Well, if the meditations of your heart are not acceptable in God's sight, your life becomes very much displeasing to God. In Psalms 119, the Bible tells us in verse 9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed thereto according to your word? In the same Psalm 119, King David also said, Your words have I hid in my heart so that I will not sing against you. It's important for you to put the law of God in your heart so that it will build a garrison, a wall around your life. 
The Bible said, as the mountain surrounds Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. Now, spiritually speaking, the mountains around Jerusalem physically, so our hearts, our lives should be surrounded by the truth of the word of God. David said, teach me, O Lord, your ways, and I shall keep it unto the end. There is only one way that you can be taught the ways of God in your heart. In your heart. That's why David said, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Those who are not careful to guard their thoughts ends up becoming thoughtless, mindless, and insensitive to what the Spirit of God is doing and undiscerning to what Satan is doing against them. I believe that when Joshua became confused about the journey ahead of him, God introduced him to what I call focused thinking by not just muting his mind, by not thinking anything, but directing his thoughts in the light of the word of God, ensuring that he fills his thoughts with the promises of God. Let's read the book of Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. It's been said that after Moses died, Joshua began to feel some sense of bewilderment, wondering where do we go from here? How do we approach the task before us? And so God saw the bewilderment of Joshua. And so God said to him in Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8, he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Actually, you can see that in verse 2. Joshua was told by God, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all these people, unto the land which I do give to you, even to the children of Israel. And then God addressed over time, and as a matter of fact, time and time again, God addressed the issue of fear and discouragement. One of the things that cripples our thoughts is fear. Another thing that cripples our thoughts from having a positive approach to focus thinking is discouragement and perhaps despair. So God said to Joshua, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have given it to you, as I said to Moses. And it says in verse 5, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life, as I was mo with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. As if that was not enough, in verse 6, God said to Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Now, it would have been okay for God to say just once and Joshua agreed, but he's a, he was a human being. So even though God was asking him to be strong and courageous, the situation that befell him was very much overwhelming. So in verse 7, God said again, only be strong and very courageous. I believe God doesn't waste words. But when he begins to emphasize a truth to you, it is because he wants to drive that truth home. Perhaps he's addressing a major, mega issue in your life. So God in verse 7 said again, be strong and very courageous. First, be of good courage. Secondly, be courageous. Hallelujah. He said, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Don't turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. 
in verse 9. The third time, God addressed Joshua with reference to his fear and courage. He said, have not I commanded you, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be you dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wheresoever you go. Now, how do you address the issue of fear and discouragement? Focus thinking. What do you focus on? Focus on what God has asked of you. Focus on number one, the promises of God. Focus on number two, the provisions of God. Because God will provide for you. So every vision from God, there are provisions. He said, my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It is the, it is the Lord your God that gives you power to get wealth or make wealth so you may establish his covenant on earth. Every vision from God commands God's provisions. Once upon a time, Jesus sent his disciples out and told them not to carry purses. And when they came back, he asked them, when I sent you out to carry, to go and preach the gospel and don't carry any script or purses with you, did you lack anything? It means that while you go on his behalf, he will provide for you. He will cause men to show you favor. So don't let lack or insufficiency distract you. God who has sent you is with you. So God was saying to Joshua, don't look at your incapacitation. Don't look at your inability. Be strong and of good courage. At least not less than three times, God emphasized to Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Why? His mind was wandering. The Bible said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. What Satan wants to do for you is to distract your mind. A distracted mind is a doubtful mind that can ultimately result in a very doubtful heart. And when your heart becomes doubtful, you become faithless and fearful. That's why God kept re-emphasizing, Joshua, be strong, be of good courage. I believe God was trying to help Joshua to mind his thoughts, to stop him from wondering and thinking, Moses is dead. I can't do this. I cannot do this. Moses was the one that started it. He has to be around to finish it. No. The Bible said in the book of Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hence, your victory begins with how you handle your thought pattern. And that's what God addressed in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the Lord, the word of God, shall not depart out of your mouth. Now, there's something God is about to do here. He's about to connect what you do with your mouth with what is in your heart. Hence, Jesus in the New Testament tells us, as a man... He's thinking, so he will be speaking. He said, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. Where do you meditate? In your heart. Psalms 1 tells us that. In his law, does he meditate day and night? Go ahead. He says, that you may observe to do According to all that is written, there is it. There is something about meditation. It's a force. You come to a point in your meditation that it drives your action. And that's how to mind your thought. Don't allow negative thoughts to rule you. But begin to think on the promises of God. Begin to think on the possibilities of God. Because the Bible says, with God all things are possible. Don't limit your experience to what you think you can do. He said, with men, these things are impossible. But with God, nothing shall be impossible. So in your focused thinking, 
begin to think on the possibilities of God. Jeremiah came to a point and said, is anything too hard for you, O God? He said, hi, Lord God. You have made the heavens and the earth by your great power. He repeated, hi, Lord God. You have made the heavens and the earth by your outstretched arms. Is anything too difficult or too hard for you? In your focused thinking, friends, think on the promises of God, what he has told you. Why? Because God is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. As he says, shall he not do? As he spoken, shall he not make it good? He said, blessed is she who believed. There shall be a performance of those things which were told her by the Lord. Proverbs chapter 4, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that God is able to perform what he has promised. So focus on the promises of God. Focus on the possibilities of God. Why? Because the God that gave you the promise or the promises knows no limit. He is the God of all possibilities. The Bible said his going forth is from of old, and his name is called Holy. He is the Alpha and the Omega, and in between your beginning and the ending, he is there. He has never left you for once. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So you can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid what any man can do to me. It's time to trust in the possibilities of the almighty God. We saw the possibilities of God in the life and ministry of Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good, healing all those who are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Friends, listen to me. God will do you good as you begin to focus on what he has told you, his promises, focus on his possibilities, focus on his abilities, God's abilities, because the possibilities of God, they come to us as a result of the ability of God. Oh, the almighty God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever ask, think, or imagine in prayers. God will beat your expectation. So trust him. Trust is a key in the journey of minding your thoughts, hallelujah, and then trust in the provisions of God. Indeed, David said in Psalm 23, verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He lead me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. David said, I'll fear no evil for you are with me. He said, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And then God, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. He says, surely, come on, say with me, surely. That means certainly. That means without a doubt. He said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. That's an assurance of God's provision. Trust in his provisions. Trust in his plan. Trust in the plans of God. Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to do you good and not to harm you. To give you the future and the hope. Focus on God's plan. Oh, friends, trust God's process. Trust God's process. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows the beginning from the ending. He knows what he's doing. Romans 8.28 tells us that God will work all things together for your good because he loves you and you love him and you have been called according to his purpose. So as you trust in the plans of God, friends, trust in the process of God. is working behind the scenes of your pain, the behind the scenes of your life. And God is going to turn your pains to profit. Oh, he did it for Mordecai. 
while Haman was out there breathing so much threat against Mordecai, God was walking behind the scenes against Mordecai so that every evil thought of Mordecai became his portion. The Bible said, the Lord God is your portion in the land of the living. He said, there's no enchantment against Jacob. There is no divination against Israel. He said, the Lord your God is with you. There is a shout of a king in the midst of you. He said, God has not bared iniquity in Jacob. He has not found transgression in Israel. Hallelujah. God is on your side as he was on the side of Mordecai. Now, you wouldn't find the word God in the book of Esther, but you can see that God was walking behind the scenes in the same thing or in the same situation of your life where you cannot see the hand of God, trust his heart. His plans are for you and are good towards you. So trust in the process of God. Whatever God is taking you through, he has a plan and he's working something out for your good. And also trust in the purpose of God. Yes. Why? Because it doesn't work everything together for good to just any and everybody. No. For those who are called according to his purpose. Ask yourself, what is God's purpose for me? What is God's plan for my life? Trust in his purpose. Don't let the enemy take you off your guard. Don't let him take you off course. Trust in God's purpose. Hallelujah. In, in the case of Jesus, the Bible tells us that in spite of the pain, the persecution, the crucifixion, even the resurrection of Jesus, God was walking his purpose. In the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible tells us, For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to earth for a purpose. And there is no such thing as a purposeless human being. Every human being was created with a purpose. The only difference is that some have discovered their purpose and they are running the race of life in the direction of their purpose. There are others, they live life as if life is an accident. They just stumble and fumble and continue to go on in life as if they have no direction. Their case is similar to what the Bible describes in Genesis 1 verse 2. Tohu vabohu. Don't let your life be a tohu vabohu, meaning that your life is empty and without direction. No, God has occasioned your life for a reason. You are a creature of divine design and God has designed you with a purpose in view. So trust in the purpose of God. More importantly, go and ask God, what is your purpose for my life? Because you have a unique purpose with God. These are things that will help to guard your thoughts, to mind how you think. You begin to think in the direction of the purpose of God and reject, refuse, and resist every satanic distraction in your mind. Now, strictly, five major things you should do in order to mind your thoughts and move in the directions that I've spoken about. Number one, practice scriptural meditation. Psalms 1, verse 1 to 3. Practice biblical meditation. Of course, David said in the book of Psalms 19, verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Now, let's read Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scumble. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, in the Bible, in the word of God, and in his law does he meditate. So engage in scriptural meditation. Because when you do, you become like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season. Your leaf will not wither, and whatsoever you do will prosper. Number two, engage in positive affirmation. Stop thinking low of yourself. Why? Because you are who you are, because of who Christ is. The Bible tells us in the book of Colossians, Christ in us is the hope of glory. So begin to affirm yourself in who you are in Christ. I'm not talking about self-esteem. I'm talking about Christ's esteem. You are who you are because of who Christ is in you. So begin to affirm yourself 
in who Christ is in your life. The Bible says, greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Friends, the one on your inside is bigger and greater than what is going on on your outside. Remember when Jesus was in the boat with his disciples, he was inside the boat with them. But on the outside, there was a heavy storm threatening to destroy all of them. One of the disciples went to where Jesus was sleeping and said, Master, don't you care that we perish? Jesus rose up from where he was. And imagine, how could you perish when I'm in the same boat with you? Come on. And he came to where the storm was. He said, oh, you of little faith. The Bible said Jesus rebuked the storm. And the wind ceased. And the people said, what manner of man is this? Even the wind and the sea, they obeyed him. Now listen to me. It doesn't matter what is happening around you. The storm around your head, around your life. The one on your inside, maybe seemingly sleeping, is not unaware of what's going on around you. And as you awaken him through your prayers, it's going to calm your storm. He did it in the days of his disciples. And he's doing it for you right now as I speak. In the name of Jesus, we speak to every storm in your life to cease. In Jesus' precious name. Number three. I've mentioned this before. Why the enemy fill your mind with so many thoughts of trepidation, despair, despondency, desperation? Take a pause to practice focused thinking. Actually, the word meditation in a more literal translation means focused thinking. It also means to mutter, begin to speak out from your heart positive things. Begin to speak them out. The Bible explained that positive confession will brings about your possession. Amen. Then avoid things and people who can trigger negativity around you. Avoid them. Avoid bad news, even of your nation. Avoid it. Oh, everybody's going down. Things are going haywire. Avoid such thoughts. Avoid such information. Negative information will bring deformation. Positive information, good news from God and his people will bring total life transformation and for good. So avoid the influences of bad news, social media. The social media is an awesome tool in the hand of God through men, but use it wisely and use it positively. And then guard your imagination, very important. Meaning to say, bring your thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. Second Corinthians chapter five. The Bible tells us that we can rule our thoughts. We don't have to allow our thoughts to rule us. Amen, somebody. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Meaning to say, endeavor to direct your thoughts in the dimension of faith. Don't allow what you see to influence your life. The Bible says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Don't walk by what you see. Don't walk by the so-called negative obvious around your life. Guide your thoughts. In Luke chapter 6, verse 45, Jesus said, a good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, bring forth good things. So how do you store good treasures in your heart? Meditate on the scriptures. Let's quickly read the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 to explain how we can guard our imagination and perhaps your thoughts have gone spiritually influenced by demon spirit. How do you deal with them? So that some of the things you think are no longer you thinking them. They are demons trying to possess your line of thoughts. Here, what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 
Verse 3 said, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. He said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they are not natural, they are not fleshy, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So the enemy started with a foothold, but sadly, he has translated his foothold into a stronghold of your mind or in your mind. The Bible says you can pull them down, usually in the name of of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Number two, casting down imaginations, the contradictions in your mind, the arguments in your thoughts. He said you should cast them down and every high thing that exalts itself against the counsel of God, the knowledge of God, the promises of God, the word of God, every thought, every high thing, everything that exalts itself above what God has said, the Bible says you should cast them down. And then bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You bring into captivity every thought to submit to the purpose, the promises, the plan, the provisions, and the purpose of God for you in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you, shall we pray. Lord, we give you honor, we give you glory. Spirit of the Most High God, we trust you today to strengthen us with all might, even by your spirit in our inner man, that Christ will dwell in our heart by faith, that we will not give in to negative thoughts, we will not give in to demonic thoughts of lies and trepidation, thoughts of fear and despondency. We rebuke the stronghold of fear, we rebuke the stronghold of unbelief. We rebuke satanic manipulation, spirit of hell, satanic trepidation, satanic sedition. We come against you now in the name of Jesus. Oh, we pray, Heavenly Father, let the words of our mouth speak in grace and the meditations of our heart, God, be acceptable in your sight. You may want to anoint your head with oil and command every yoke on your head be broken in the name of Jesus. Some of you, the thoughts that you have accommodated over time is driving you crazy such that you are even considering suicide. Put an oil on your head. I command every yoke of the enemy upon your head, trying to drive you towards suicide. Be broken and destroyed in the name of Jesus. I come against the thought of suicide. I come against the thought of madness, insanity. I come against that satanic, depressive thought. Lose that fellow and let him and her go in Jesus' name. It shall come to pass, says the Lord, that the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulders. It's yoke from off your neck. He said, because of the anointing, the yoke is destroyed. The yoke is broken. I command every yoke in your heart, in your thought, in your mind, in your imagination. Master, set say, sit to so so pato so palita. Touch your heart, your chest right now. Make your heart is palpitating. I command calmness in your storm. In Jesus' name. I decree and declare you are well, you are blessed, you are saved, you are delivered in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. I trust that everyone under the influence of my voice who is going through some situations that are overwhelming receive the calmness of God's Spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I believe the Lord allowed me to move in that direction. If you have a testimony, please share with us on this platform. We trust that you have been blessed. Stay with us as we continue on this journey. Grace to you and shalom. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen.